Welcome to another episode of Div Tool Them All. This is the series where we go through popular websites and apps uh, and look through Div Tools and see how the web app of the version of this website is, is actually working. Like what kind of requests are being made? Uh, what kind of protocol the backend uses? Uh, what kind of security mechanisms that are uh, applied by this backend and uh, very very interesting things show up when we do this we did this for TikTok, we did this for instagram we did this for apple website reddit and many many others and today we're gonna def tool spotify especially that they st recently started supporting the video version i think it will be very interesting to go through that how about we jump into it so as usual, we start with Spotify.com and we hit enter and then we just watch the graph here. Let's start with that. Look at that. Look at the waterfall here. Exactly. Every time you guys see this purple and orange and this kind of uh, greenish color, bluish, that indicates there is a, a TCP connection that has been open. Not necessarily it could be quick case of HTTP3 but most of the time when you see this that means there is a new connection that being open and when you see this many that's an indication that this website visits a lot of other domains and also either that or this website uses HTTP 1.1 which requires obviously multiple connections in order to support uh, parallel request effectively instead of re sending a request and wait for it uh, we know this HTTP 2 and HTTP 3 solve this problem and but this is it basically what if you if we just take a look at this this is expensive you know opening these connections uh, effectively obviously drain your battery it's not a problem in my case here because i have a laptop but it's effectively there's a lot of resource consumption a lot of power you know that need requires to do that and also network bandwidth wise you're consuming a lot of stuff and obviously performance establishing these tcp connection takes time so if i go to security right and then just do this again i'm going to do this again while the security tab is active and just watch all these domains look at all this stuff right do you know what this means this means that spotify want to as much as possible try to find any hint to track you effectively right so it sends requests to Google, Google Optimize, static pages, you know, it, it talks to Twitter, right? Uh, it talks to, sends requests to Facebook, Instagram, even Snapchat. So in case that you, uh, Pinterest, Quarterly, I don't even know what that is, Facebook, that means any chance do you have if you have logged in into any of these websites because this request is called a third party request that means it's not the domain that you're currently visiting uh chrome in this particular case will send those third party cookies right because now you're visiting another website but the cookies that you have used to log in which identifies you obviously will be sent will this request with this request if uh, that means spotify will be notified that hey by the way this guy logged into snapchat and this is some information about him uh, this guy not linked to facebook and this is some information about him and and as much as possible any time in the future that you interact with a spotify this will feed into the recommendation engine and will be shared to snapchat will be shared to google will be shared to everybody else effectively right this is the state of the art <laughs> if you want to call it that right that's why a lot of people don't like third party cookies you can basically disable that if you want but with that said i'm gonna do it one more time now but now i'm gonna clear everything i'm gonna hit spotify.com and let's just watch and this time obviously we don't get the connection because it was cached so how about we actually open another uh, browser tab and do it again closing everything else so we get this beautiful connections again right let's do it again boom all right look at all this stuff <laughs> all right all right so look at that Despite me closing the tab and reopening a brand new one, 
Chrome reused an existing connection. It didn't open a new connection. That tells me that when you close a tab, Chrome holds on these connections for a little longer before destroying them. It might be an optimization that this the team have made effectively. So say, hey, let's not close this connection. Maybe maybe this user will visit this site again, keep them around effectively. That that explains that. Hey, we it took us literally it took us 0.25 to start the connection. Basically, the connection was started effectively, right? But we have done many many times uh, going through the waterfall, so I'm not gonna go there. But but I want you just to see this interesting thing here. If I click on Spotify, right? If you notice, I didn't specify the protocol. That means HSTS, right? HTTP strict transport security kicks in and says, hey, Spotify.com is actually a site that supports uh, HTTPS by default. So I'm going to assume that first, which is, which is something very good, right? You want the first request to be encrypted. But but look at that. We've seen this pattern many times in almost any website. It says, hey, by the way, wrong place. Go to www.spotify.com instead. Right? And Envoy is the proxy being used here, right? Apparently. Uh, obviously, this could be faked, right? You cannot rely on it, but it gives you an idea. Why would they lie that it's Envoy? They might why don't you, why, they want you to think it's Envoy. Well, it's not. And uh, obviously, it says Veya. That means, hey, it went to Envoy as the final destination, which, which is, you cannot trust that because Envoy is actually a proxy. It's not an HTTP server. So that means it turned around and did some, some more stuff, right? But it went through another thing called HTTP2 Edge Proxy, Google Proxy again. But yeah, go and go to www. So this is exactly what our browser did. It went to www, which then says, hey, 302, anything 3xx is basically a redirect, right? Again, redirect to where? So this is not the place. We, we established a connection. We established the TLS. And we sent a request only to get a redirect. Where are we redirected to? <laughs> Again, this is the second redirect. Go, oh, by the way, never mind. This guy or gal is from the US, so redirect to this US location. Do you think that they had this knowledge at this point? I believe they do because they have my IP address. Again, I'm using a VPN just to hide if my IP address showed up here while I show stuff. But I, I set my VPN to to effectively Los Angeles, right? So it did that, detect that um, this is effectively uh, in the US. So it will go and redirect to the US version of that. But it could have done it in the previous uh, link, right? Again, I'm, I know I'm nitpicking, but that's the job, right? This is our job. We have to nitpick over this. We're just a bunch of armchair engineers here. We just we just point and say, no, this is bad. This is good. <laughs> right? Here's the thing. 307, another redirect. It's called temporary redirect. Where? Where am I getting redirected from or to? Again, redirect to this location, Spotify.com, open.spotify.com, which will be the final thing, effectively, right? Again, we're being served from Envoy. And some session ID, some some more metadata about me. And I wanted to know that the cookies were sent because I have logged in. Yeah, despite this is incognito, but I have already previously logged in uh, because the Spotify requires you to log into browse stuff. So I have logged in here. That request again another redirect look at this guys how many redirects have we done but this the most interesting thing here is actually this is bad this is bad this asked us to redirect to http a plane so it can be intercepted and changed because if it's unencrypted then the browser will respect the protocol right it says hey you want me to go to http i will go to http and it did. It got to, it went to HTTP, open Spotify.com, only to get redirected again to what? Another unencrypted link. So you notice this redirect hell that you're going just because you went to Spotify.com. You know, this tells me that either people don't care anymore. Says, hey, yeah, it's a bunch of the redirect. We have fast stuff, so who cares? But as an engineer, I really care about these small things, you know. 
it makes you think that you you understand what the site is doing and this many di redirects that means either spotify don't have control over these many system where they can effectively do it in an efficient manner or basically it's, eh, it's not important enough to fix and which i believe it's the latter eh, it's not important to fix but this is really bad redirecting to an unencrypted thing that means someone can effectively uh effectively know that right but th th this is it so now go ahead and redirect so we went there redirect to this which we sent the request this is a plain text that explained that we actually got the description here because this is http 11 let's let's, let's actually see uh, http 11 http 1 doesn't always mean that it's unencrypted but unencrypted http request must be on http 11 right that's just the fact these days and i talked about this why as a why i talked about it many times in my channel if you're interested i can i can talk more about that it's basically called something called protocol ossification so now we went again but hey this time actually that final redirect uh, the browser said wait a minute no i'm gonna go to https this time i'm gonna establish a new connection to spotify.com and then i'm gonna send it over https right so now we sent it over securely now this is really bad because now my cookies did my co did they send my cookies over http they did not okay that's good that would be a disaster if they sent my cookie across an uh, unencrypted connection and that's good right that's by default because now most cookies have an attribute called secure which means hey don't send the cookie unless the connection is secure right and this is part of the same site, uh, our re-architecture of the whole thing, cookies, right? All right, so now that's that's the request, right? Now, followed by a CSS for our web player and a bunch of fonts. Let's look at the fonts. The fonts are served from the service worker, which is, uh, think of it like a fancy proxy that is local to you right and i really wish there's a way to disable the service worker i don't know guys if you know but it just hides a lot of stuff from me right i want to see what is was the service worker is doing but i don't know how but yeah effectively effectively this is this is going to the service worker right that's why when you go to spotify.com chrome's ask you do you want to install the app version the progressive web app right but yeah, it's doing HTTP 1.1 because I believe the connection locally between the client browser and the service worker is always HTTP 1.1. There's no point, right? So we're downloading three fonts. All right, see, serve from the service worker. Who cares? All right? A bunch of JavaScript. Again, the web player, which we're going to use to play this beautiful stuff that we're going to see soon. Uh, some other JavaScript that I don't care about. A failure says too many requests what did i do why is the why does it say too many requests again another quest request going on here and uh let's take a look at the page so we noticed that i got served some podcasts that i'm not subscribed this is again this is a, a temporary account that i created so i'm not subscribed to any podcast but i got some recommendation how they probably tried as much as possible to identify me how you might think there is a request called me here so when you go a request says slash me right the preview look at this and, and, and it's fine to show this it's absolutely fine this is my email which is already public most of you send me emails right it's my email it's my birthday right i'll turn 23 this uh this march i'm so excited uh to uh, I'll finish college soon, so I'm really excited there. Uh, this is my email, Spotify, some blah, 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 some more information, right? So that's, 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 this request is used basically to, uh, to, uh, uh, to identify who are you. And the flow followers, I don't have any external, any information about you will be there effectively, right? And then web worker, some more events. Events basically is is the request that I noticed the, to track you. Uh, another query to me. This is another thing that isn't really inefficient. You ask the question once, why on the hell are you asking it many times, right? One is enough, right? And usually 
this is an artifact of uh, code that has been a function that you call in JavaScript and you don't know what is it doing. Yeah, you call a function to get you something and you call it in a loop, for example, and you don't know that this function actually calls in some rest endpoint, right? To get you some information. So if you call it, you notice that you were making these requests. Without actually looking at this, you will notice that this me request is being executed over and over again, which we know notice here. All right, so this is what is most interesting the personalized recommendation call. Right? Personalized recommendation, we notice that the options and there is the actual call. Notice that the actual call, the get request, is before the option. But if you look at the waterfall, do you see this? This white line? This means that this request has been stalled for X amount of seconds until the actual option request finish. This is part of course. So I'm gonna try to send them all in parallel, but this request is actually the get request. This is the, uh, all right, let's do it again. So this is the get request, but this is the options, the pre-flight option. You notice that the get was sent before, but it was actually queued. You see this white dot? This means stalled. And I really, man, I don't know if anyone from the Chrome team is saying, why guys, why did you remove the legend in this dialogue? You guys had the legend with the colors and they removed it for some reason. How the heck I would know what this color means now, right? It's just, man, I don't know who designs these things, but you guys had a good idea and then you, you, you made it worse. What is this table? This table is now ugly. I don't know if you go back to my old videos where you actually see the colors. Hey, uh, this is the connection star. This is purple uh, and this is stalling is white. I don't know, man. Sometimes I don't know. So personal recommendation, regardless. So we know that we got the results and let's take a look at the content items. What did we get? What's the first item? What's the first item? Give me the first item. What is this? Happy hits. What is this? All right. So this is the Joe Rogan experience, right? Name the Joe Rogan experience, right? What's the second item? Destructible. I don't even know what's that podcast, right? I wish back in engineering show shows up here. That would be awesome, man. The Misfit podcast. A bunch of them. Last podcast network. So yeah, this is this is this is basically all the recommended stuff, and then there's a bunch of other stuff that I don't care about, right? So this is it. You notice that this is extremely inefficient. You know, there is first of all just the idea of tracking, which I don't think they have. It. Everybody uses Spotify, but at least in the U.S. here, right? So you want really you gonna pay anything? right to know what are you interested in song wise or shows wise right and you want to sell this information to pretty much anyone right so if you see you if you see snapchat here probably snapchat have paid spotify for a little bit of money and say hey i want to know what this guy is actually interested in right what this gal what kind of music so that recommendation in snapchat or instagram facebook will be effectively shared based on that if the third party cookies are gone then snapchat the request to go to snapchat here whatever this is right and uh, we can actually filter right snap chat Th this is the request to snapchat effectively right this request with this particular ID, which apparently identifies me, that will never send the cookies, right? Now it's not going to send any cookies anyway, because I don't, I am not logged into Snapchat. But if I was, right, in my phone, then that will be sent effectively, right? Look at that. Snapchat uses uh, Nginx 1.17.3. Interesting. Most. Some people always say that this is actually leaking information. I would agree that leaking the actual version, especially with Log4j, with the disaster that was, knowing the exact version is actually a leak, effectively. All right. What else? 
how about we play something? Let's go to the Joe, Joe Rogan experience and play something. For the Joe Rogan experience, you notice that I previously clicked on this episode before. That's why it's green. And it tells you, hey, you actually watched it and watched 30 seconds of it. And the information is not actually in the browser. It's on the server. So when I retrieved that, it pulled back this information back. Let's 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 go through this. That's effectively. Let's refresh that. And you can see that. Uh, let's remove Snapchat. You can see we submitted a request, got the HTML, and then immediately we got all the, again, we're downloading the web player again, and then we're making these requests. And the most interesting request that I'm going to show you here, guys, is, is basically to list the episodes here. You notice that this is, the, this is their mechanism, effectively. So this is so, something called the query rest endpoint, right? The query rest endpoint effectively takes an operation name so they made it into a like a generic graph ele kind of a thing uh, by sending everything into the parameters right so the, the url doesn't change but the operation is what changes so this query says hey query show metadata give me the show's metadata and it will tell you this is the joe rogan experience right this is some metadata about it playability i don't know what's that playable interesting i believe this is whether you can play it or not maybe if it's a premium show you cannot play it uh, can can this user play this or not <laughs> i wonder if you can intercept that and literally change this uh, playable to uh, to if it was false go change it to true all right i believe you can edit stuff in dev tools right can you <laughs> that would be fantastic. Just change that into true, and then hey, you can just unlock stuff. Right. So it gives you some metadata about all that stuff, right? Um, but let's go to another query here. Here's another query operation. This time, this I, I want. To, oh my god, I want to show you this, guys. So this is another query that says operation name fetch extracted colors, and I was like, what the heck? What? what are we doing with the extracted colors extracted colors what what kind of extracted colors it's like and then uh what is this is this the options ah oh, god ah this was the options never mind let's go to the actual get request where is it there you go i want i need to find the there you go this is the matching get get request for it and boy yeah it's asking to extract the colors and some the front end engineers probably know this but boy, I was I was fascinated by this. Look at this. It gives you the exact colors for that matches this podcast, I believe, so they can paint this background. So they can take from this image, for example, and then paint this background. I just found this fascinating. Can you do this in the HTML page? Find it just just resolve this on the server side right and then uh, return this as part of the html and make this static right i'm guessing that if, if the image changes perhaps then they oh, no if the image changes then calculate that again in the server side right because the, the the image will be cached with that color right again that was it's just another thing that I noticed that is, I don't think it's necessary, to be honest, right? Query podcast episodes. So this is, this is it. This is basically the list of all the episodes, not all of them. Again, we see the offsets, right? This is basically how the query is working. The next offset. Now, here's the thing. Uh, they are using a number to fetch that tells me they are actually using the offset operator i don't know if they're using sql or not but this is not enough information to give you the next offset right i don't know how they are data modeling this but this will tank the more episodes joe rogan will have a thousand is nothing ten thousand is nothing a million yeah then you're gonna start uh, seeing the performance because offset is just effectively bad right you need you need some sort of a unique identifier that tells you hey i was here last time instagram and tiktok was doing it the optimal way where they effectively tell you exactly hey here's where i wa was last time right uh, so they send that but if you send a number hey uh, give me the next 50 i watched 50 50 is relative you don't know 
how much you will have to basically do offset 50 or offset 100 and offset a thousand and that that's basically causes the queries in the back end to retrieve everything and then go and actually skip 50 or skip a thousand or skip 2000 and that is obviously very wasteful right i talked about offset uh, many times uh this is the episode i don't i don't think we need to do anything more about this but it's, i just found it fascinating they are doing this so let's go ahead and clear this and then and I, as i scroll you can see that the images are being retrieved these are the images retrieved from the cdn scdn i believe that's that for spotify and then uh, as we scroll 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 we must see the next uh, query uh, there you go there's the next query again we're sending this next query uh options followed by this for the life of me i think this is a bug guys but look at this when i send this options why are we always sending options i believe this is a bug in chrome to be honest but but look at this we're sending this request and we telling the client hey client never ask me again for the next 60,000 seconds which is plenty of time if you ask me right so don't ask this you can cache that fact but apparently chrome is ignoring that number and is always sending the options regardless hey can i query you can i query you of course you can it's api partner it's the same thing but you notice that we always send the get request it was sent the pre-flight before the get and i for the life of me i couldn't figure it out why are we doing that to me it's just a, uh, sounds like a bug in chrome right because otherwise this thing this thing the max age that's useless then because it's not being respected hey cash the fact that hey i told you that you're good you can cash that fact so don't ask it again but yeah this is the next query to get the rest of the stuff now we see that the next offset is 100. And finally, guys, which is the most important thing we didn't do, is actually play something. Let's play something. Scott Eastwood, sure. Let's play Scott Eastwood. And we're going to play. And uh, yeah, we're getting, when you play something, immediately we, we give you a recommendation. We try to call a method called Get Recommended Episodes. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll say, hey, because you watch this, now these are recommended episodes. You can watch this and this. I bet I'd be a recommendation from the same show, or maybe it's a different show. But yeah. But uh, are we downloading? Did we start downloading? Yeah, there you go. Here's, here's, here's a fascinating part. This is very, very similar. Playing this video is very, very similar to how Twitch does it they chop off the episode into webm which is which is a new standard right it's different than the html5 standard and then they just chop it by parts and then download these parts part by part exactly like how twitch does it so you see this request to this akamai so here's one thing we know that spotify uses akamai uh to save their videos effectively it's fascinating how much you can learn just by looking at the URLs, dude. Right? So you can see that, okay, 24. See this? See a profile 23? This 23 didn't change. This is always the same for Joe Rogan, right? But 24.webm, this changes, right? So if I look at 32, right? This is another portion. And you can, as you as you scroll clear. You can see that another request. We reach 140.mb. How big are each of these segments? There's the size. Where's the size? Content length. 37 kilobyte, right? A little, little compressed video, WebM, that's the type. And everyone is e tagged so that uh, if somehow you reversed and you want to watch certain part again, that particular uh, Part will be downloaded but it will be cached in your browser effectively so it will not it will say hey it didn't change you can just uh, use the one you had and amazon request id i'm baffled anymore oh amazon, what 
Look at that. It's on S3. Okay. But why does it say Akamai's.net? So, okay. So, I think... All right. So, I think the back end is actually S3, but CDN, they're using Akamai CDN. Or maybe Akamai is using S, uh, S3. That could be it. Fascinating, huh, guys? How much you learn from this. All right, guys. So, this is it, basically. I wanted to go through Spotify. I know there's a little bit of longer episode, but I think uh, we talked about so much stuff. Uh, let me know what you think about in, in the comments below. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.